Okay guys, so the Explorer rear end that we bought for this Jeep originally came on uh, five on four and a half and we need to change it to five on five and a half Bronco lug pattern. So Michael is gonna use his machine here to cut us the proper pattern, the template that we could sleeve over on the axle and then drill out the new, not the new rotors, the Explorer rotors to five on five and a half. And then if you ever need to do this in the field, you'll have a pattern. And I live in a van down by the river. So if I ever need to replace a rotor when we're on the road, I'll have this template and I can easily drill them myself. We got the rear axle in and what we're doing now is we're making sure it's centered in the wheel well and then we're checking for our bump stops where they're gonna land in between the frame. Everything we're doing right now is temporary and then we wanna put a tire on and check our clearances and then that's gonna kinda dictate where the axle goes front and back and how much we have to trim before we start cycling everything. And then we'll mount the leaf springs to what works with the tire being in the wheel well. And we broke down the leaf pack, meaning we took the main leaf out of our whole pack and we're gonna cycle it, right? To make sure we don't get too much negative arch. No, I kinda have all that already figured out. I more just wanna set it so I can see how much this thing swings for oh. actual wheel travel. We're gonna see how much wheel travel we have. Okay, so we made our front leaf spring hangers right here, and then you measure, and we're gonna make our rear hangers, and then we're also working on making our U-bolt um, plates for the axle to hold it in place. Oh, this is his plasma cam. Basically, he can draw up anything, and he can cut it out on this table out of metal. He also has a scanner, so he can scan them, and he basically saves a lot of his templates for projects that he uses often. It saves a lot more time than putting stuff out by hand. So we're trying to measure our fitment on the rear. It's gonna be cut real close to the door here. And then we're actually gonna taper up and we're gonna come back. These 35s are massive and our axle is a little wide. So the tires are gonna stick out a bunch in the back. So we're gonna try to make it work. What's up? What's going on in this so, tire cutting? We're clearancing the rear fenders and these 35s are really big. So we had to cut out this inner wheel well. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a plate in here to fill this back in. So it's kind of like a reverse tubbing. Normally you do the tubbing on the inside of the vehicle, but this one we're kind of doing it out here and we're gonna plate that back in and then hopefully it'll it'll fit to some extent. It's stuck to sheet metal going that way right there, so that's why it flared. Well, so we put a bigger one here and we could probably flare it a little yeah. to match that. Better. Better. Oh yeah, I can see it coming out on camera. <laughs> A few moments later. When we cut the fenders, we had a big hole left. So I'm trying to fit this up the best I can. These are gonna get folded over to fill that little hole. Nice big piece of aluminum, because that goes directly into the Jeep. So we want that all snug and tight. You can see what the other side looks like here. There we go, a massive hole. So that's what we had to do to fit the 35. So we're gonna fill it in with aluminum, and we're gonna get it nice and sealed with some seam sealer, and Hopefully it holds up well. So we're here on a Saturday morning, grinding away on the Jeep. Mr. Michael, the Fab Lab, at the Fab Lab Instagram, make sure you follow him, is uh, designing the cantilever setup that's gonna go under the back of the Jeep. So we're doing a custom Deaver leaf spring pack, which is based off what, a Toyota 62 inch? Yeah, like a long travel style Toyota 62 inch spring under setup. And then we have some 12 inch, those are called piggybacks or what? The rear shocks? Yeah. Those would be 12 inch bottom mount back. Smooth bodies. Made by ADS, Arizona Desert Racing. Shocks, just like the front coilovers. And we're trying to get it figured out because it's a little bit complicated. One of the main reasons we went with a cantilever setup is because we wanted anywhere from 15 to 20 inches of rear wheel travel. On my buddy's Ford Bronco, the rear floor kicks up for the back seat. So you can actually just lean the shocks backwards, do a cross tube, and you could pull 17 inches of travel. A lot of guys with an SUV like this would cut holes through the floor and they would build a little cage in the back cargo area and you could get a lot of travel that way as well. But I didn't want, I wasn't able to have a rear floor that kicked up just by design of the Jeep. Also, 
I did not want to put holes through the back of the Jeep for various reasons. One of the reasons being we need the storage space. I mean, you know, we're living on the road full time. Who knows? We might overland full time at some point, pre-land at some point. So we didn't want to cut out the back of there because we want it for storage. Also, it makes the vehicle louder on the highway and, uh, it's really hard to keep dust and dirt out of there as well. So we just went with a cantilever, which we have done before. It's more work, but in the long run, it's I, what I believe is the better setup. So we're excited. This is all mock-up. So this, we were testing. We basically brought the axle up and we were just testing to make sure everything would clear. The rear shocks are gonna mount in here this way. So. The rear shocks are gonna bolt to the back of the frame here. They're gonna lay flat underneath the floorboard here. It's kind of hard to see. They're gonna bolt here. So this is full droop, meaning like if we're, when we jump the truck, this is what it's gonna look like. And then as the axle comes up, the shocks are gonna pivot backward. So we added this piece of square tubing in the back to basically strengthen up the back of the frame. And then we have it plated on the sides here. And then eventually we're gonna have some tubes that will come from here down to, what are we calling this? Cantilever. Cantilever tube. So we're gonna have tubes that run down to support this. And then eventually we're gonna do flat plate that is gonna come in at an angle like this and cut the tube so we have clearance to the lace prongs. What are you doing? What are you working on? Oh, I just did your, gusted it up your front spring hangers. Why are we doing that? Oh man, holy moly. That looks awesome. Probably strong enough. It's probably strong enough the way it was, but better safe than sorry. What are we doing today overall? Overall, we're trying to get this thing on all fours for the first time. The first time in two weeks. First time in two it's weeks. It's been a long time. First time with all the new, new everything. All the new, new. That's right. of truth we're gonna be setting the Jeep back down on its own weight for the first time since we cut the front frame off we just got the rear all bolted together well I didn't I was at lunch and the guys did but they did a great job here we go we got the tires on the leaf springs are all put back together and we're gonna see what the ride height looks like coming down I'm so nervous what if I don't like it what if it sits like a monster truck what do you think it's tall it's tall it's tall it's not yeah. bad, it's gonna settle. But it's gonna settle at least an inch. Yeah, and once you put a big tire in the back, I'm, all I'm your tools. So this is kind of ride height for the time being, which is very tall, but you gotta remember, we're gonna add a 35 inch spare in the cargo area. We're gonna add a, a spare, a jack, tools, people. So these springs are gonna settle over time as well. We're gonna roll this thing forward and back a bunch. And then it should help settle the front. Yeah, let's see what the front looks like. All right, so it's currently on its own weight. I'm gonna roll it back and forth a little bit, try to help the front settle out because these TTV, TTV front ends are a little strange. And then uh, the camber should adjust itself once we roll it back and forth. Five and a quarter. I need to figure out what this spring bricks at so I can move this up more. So we gotta. What do you mean little... brick? Bricking a spring is when you completely collapse it to where all the coils touch. Oh. Okay. So you want to make sure that you can. You'll never let this upper spring brick that's before the dual rate it. stops. Stop it from happening. Yeah, because it'll it's just. It's like a de arch. It just fatigues the spring over time. Yeah. yeah it, got it. They probably do it for years, but why but. chance it? Just it. have it have the dual rate stop stop a quarter inch. So basically, you stop with a quarter inch before bricking, and then that's like the max that you could set it, right? Exactly. So we made a lot of progress today. The rear is all painted. It was cycled. We had the truck on all fours today, which was awesome. So we got to see kind of what it's going to look like at ride height. A little high in the back, but these leaf springs typically they end up going down settling after you use it a bit and after you load up all your gear so here's a quick look at everything that we got done today all right guys final assembly has been completed on the rear end how does everybody feel about our progress I think it's great. great that's good michael explain to everybody what we've done in here 
I see your logo looks great. You put a cantilever kit on the back of a 1989 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Everything is fully custom. Not a stock, bolt, or component left at this point. These are 12 inch stroke ADS piggybacks. Only the finest, all USA made. Made in America. Looks so good guys, look at that. A lot of people ask why we built this old Jeep, and to be honest, we've wanted one forever. I wanted one for five plus years, and it just never seemed practical, and it still is not practical, but with the newer motor and the newer transmission, it'll make it more fuel efficient, more reliable, and somewhat more practical. And you know what? Life is just too damn short, so you gotta do what you wanna do. You only get one life. You gotta just live it. I know that sounds really cliche, but it's true. So we're doing it. We got the off-road suspensions. We got the new motor this thing is built for any terrain and we're gonna take it on the road with us full time so we'll see how that pans out in the long run